Okay, everybody, this is going to be a take two on the uh, internal Wi Fi mod for the R36S. Because the first time I just showed basic functions and I didn't show any diagrams or how it was done, and everybody was asking about it. So I'm going to try to go into a little more detail with this one. Okay. You can actually see it here. That's where it's mounted. And it's mounted directly across from where the contacts go. So I have very thin wire going directly to the back of the Type-C port inside. So it's basically like being plugged in, except it's plugged in on the inside. And then I have a switch on the bottom basically to cut the power. So if you want to use this or something else, I don't know what it even works with. If it works with a, uh, like a storage device or a controller or something, I'm not sure. But in the future, if you ever want to use that and you don't want to see the flashing while you're playing a game, you could just cut the power, it turns it off. And in theory, something else connected to it should work. Okay, so I'm going to open it up now and show you guys what it looks like inside. It's pretty easy to open. There's only six screws. You don't have to be too careful. It's not like a Nintendo Switch or something, or a DS, something crazy. It's pretty straightforward. One, two... Three, four, no, oh, I guess I got that one, that's six, okay. Okay, once you're inside, take your plastic spudger, pop this ribbon cable lock, that's for the screen, disconnect that. There's two screws here, okay, one, two, that's it. Also, yeah. This is the uh, speaker cable, so just pull that little guy out. Nothing's in there too tight, you don't have to be too careful. It should, now, you got to take the SD cards out. Oops. Okay. And now it should just lift up. The buttons are probably going to fall out for the volume and power. That's okay. forgot about these. The joystick or ribbon cables have to get pulled out. Oh, where's my tweezers? Here we go. You gotta kind of be careful with those if you don't take them out. I wouldn't recommend taking them out because the plastic standoffs they're mounted to are extremely weak. Very thin, brittle plastic and they will break. Ask me how I know. Okay, so I kind of want to be careful here. Let's see if I'm in frame. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. That's it. So I mounted it right there. There's some space actually. You can see here. It's actually a, a, just, I don't know, it's not a screw spot or anything, but it is in the way. So. I had to just melt that down with my soldering iron so it's flat. So now there's no space, okay? And so, okay, I made this diagram. Some people asked to see this. Let me see if it's in frame, okay? So I just, you can look at the schematics online. I mean, you can look, pull it up and think think through it and do it that way. It's I find it easier if you just make the schematic yourself. It's, it's in your orientation. So like pin one on the USB is right here, pin two, pin three, pin four. And what I did to figure out which ones were the right ones on the inside, I connected another, just a USB cable, so it's the same pin out. So I put it facing me, then you get your multimeter. Okay, I'm not going to do it right now, but you just basically, you know, test. You can prod it. I have a microscope, so you can see in there and see which one you're touching. And then when you hear a beep, 
you know it's right and then you just draw the lines so voltage pin one goes to pin two on the back pin two on the you know the dongle d d minus data negative i guess let's that go to pin six and uh d plus goes to pin five and the fourth pin is just ground so i can go like to pin one or 12 they're both the same because on the uh type c port you know the male end is 24 pins but it's it's just for you know so you can you bi-directionally plug it in so really on the pcb there's only 12 so 1 through 12 and that's how it's pinned pin out goes so if you want to follow my thing you can just take a screenshot of that you don't have to think about it or plan it just follow my thing okay one more thing before i put back together and show you guys the function i was i think i mentioned in the video i was going to show you under the microscope just how i have it all set up um so this is what it looks like this is what i was working under i mean it's a little bit messy this was a get it done job i don't care what it looks like I didn't want to keep messing with it, clean it up. I mean, even this thing's crooked, and it's killing me that this board is not parallel with that line. But, you know what, it's working. I'm not going to touch it. Even touching it now, you know, I'm worried it's going to... <laughs> I'm going to pull one of these traces out, so i got to be really careful. And you can see, I mean, that's pretty damn small there. That's my fingernail, and those are the 12 pins on the back of the port. So that's what it's connecting to inside the port, and that's just where it is on the PCB, and it's going... Okay, so now you can see that... That's exactly how I have it pinned down. And then you can see the, the the voltage up on pin one going to pin two. Just got that switch. So it's a on and off switch, just basically cutting the power to the thing. That's how the switch works. Okay. Now I'm gonna put it back together and show you guys how it works. Okay, I'm gonna put it back together now for you guys. Try to do it live here, you know. It's kinda of hard doing it with this lights in my face, but I'm gonna see what I can do. There might be some cuts in this part just for brevity sake okay okay so you gotta make sure the microphone speak wires pull through that hole kind of got to make sure this starts to go through for the LCD and you got to make sure you, got, you pull this Okay, that's for the toggle. All right. Okay. And you gotta make sure these stay in spot. It's not too difficult. I mean, compared to some other handhelds, it's, it's a walk in the park. buttons have fallen out so okay power is in okay now also when you're taking this apart guys just want to remind you guys I had a problem with this these uh, thumbsticks they're protruding they're not flat so if you lay your device flat and push on it I mean let's see if I can show look how thin I mean you can see these this one didn't break but they're they're white from the stress of the screw going in they're just very very thin there's nothing to it so I think what happened is I I might have pushed it down on it and this these ones popped out so I had to epoxy them back in they're fine now they're they're good to go but just be careful if you do take this thing apart this mat I have is actually perfect because there's a couple millimeters of space here so if you want to take it apart you can put it there and it pretty much takes the pressure off of it just be careful but you can fix it two-part epoxy like a B glue should be pretty easy to fix and you could put your Volume. I think you could do your volume buttons after it's in. Oh, maybe not. All right. You gotta lift it up a little bit sideways. The other side's falling out naturally, okay. Alright, make sure this is pulled all the way through because it has a tendency to stick down there. See what I just did? It almost was stuck down there. Alright. Let's 
better take a double take and make sure everything's laying flat because there's just enough space for those wires here going to the power switch the switch for the dongle all right so in case you didn't see how it comes out this lcd ribbon's a little bit tricky if you forget how it was when you took it out you're not going to put it back in right all right so it just goes in like normal any ribbon cable goes down it has to be tucked see this button here if you put it on like this it's going to get pinched and you're probably going to rip the cable i almost did that but i realized what was happening so you got to push it in like this tuck it down into the back okay that's the best piece of advice i got for you okay these two screws speaker this goes down like this just it's gotta lay down like a u like that way and these little ribbon cables should be in okay click down all right snap down okay Just make sure everything's in the best possible spot. All right. I wouldn't crank these down too hard because this plastic's pretty brittle. Just put it down enough when it stops going. Don't force it because you will completely uh, strip out those threads. Okay. Put the game card in. Am I still in frame here? OS card. it works looks like it's booting and it switches on green lights flashing give it a second Wi-Fi is up can you guys see that? Wi-Fi out. Okay. Now if you want to turn it off, okay, cut the power so it's off. No more Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi off. All right. That's it. Hope that helped, everybody. One last thing. This is the name of the adapter I used, since I know everybody will ask.